tracking calories or steps is ancient and an insufficient way to improve your health. After years and years of what I called myself to be an athlete through collegiate athletics, being an avid weightlifter, jujitsu, rugby, I'm now in the best shape of my life at 31 years old. I run faster, run farther, lift heavier, and I believe a major reason for that is with recovery and strain score. So let's talk strain, what it is, why we care about it, and how I've used it to set new PRs for myself. Cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death globally every year. 18 million people every year die of something that is just generally preventable with a healthy lifestyle. I'm talking exercising and eating right. Now I know it's a somber way to start this video, but it highlights the importance of improving and monitoring our cardiovascular fitness, reducing our mortality. Other things that improve with this are reduction of type 2 diabetes, some cancers, injuries from falls, depression, weight management, increased quality of life, and it can even increase brain function. And a lot of fitness trackers do a terrible job at promoting improved cardiovascular health that also coincides with recovering. And this is Whoop's moneymaker, strain and recovery. So why is it important that these two things work in symbiosis? Because exercise vastly decreases the risk of cardiovascular disease, but too much can put your body into stress, which then can have a negative effect on your cardiovascular health. We want the Goldilocks zone, just the right amount of exercise to be healthy while also giving ourselves the adequate time to recover. No matter what level of fitness you're at, whether you're just getting off the couch or you're an Olympian, this information is vitally important. It's going to keep the person that's just getting started from pushing themselves too hard too fast, and it's going to help pull the reins back on the elite athletes who think they're superheroes who can push it hard every day, and also everyone in between like myself. And that's what WHOOP does by basing our strain goal for the day off of how well you recovered the previous day. It's a quantitative way to illustrate Bannister's fitness fatigue model for athletic performance that states your level of performance is limited by your upper fitness level minus your level of fatigue. Rather than just using our perceived subjective measurements, we're able to also use objective measurements from WHOOP. Now, we're only focused on WHOOP's strain score in this video, so if you haven't seen my video on recovery, check that one out after you finish this one. So let's get into strain. WHOOP's proprietary strain measurement is an arbitrary 0 to 21 scale. There's no specific reason they chose 21, just that it was close to the Borg scale that measured rate of perceived exertion, which is on a 6 to 20 scale. And that one is based on heart rate by multiplying each of the zones by 10. The strain scale is a measurement of the strain you're putting on your cardiovascular system throughout the day. Per WHOOP, strain is calculated by the duration of time you spend in each of your personal max heart rate zones, established from your max heart rate. Each percentile has a different weight to know how much strain will increase. The more elevated your heart rate, and for the longer duration, the higher your strain. With that being said, hitting a 21 is theoretically impossible, since you'd have to be at a max heart rate the entirety of the time that you're awake. Also of note, notice that the language is personalized. It's all about your baseline measurements that are calculated by WHOOP periodically. Personalized measurements is another thing that other fitness trackers just don't do. Also unlike other fitness trackers, meaning all of them, strain starts by the time that you go to bed. It's not on a daily cycle. Your day starts over when you close your eyes, which means there are times you could even wake up with a strain score. These are probably the times that your body is expending a little extra energy to help you recover when you're asleep. This gives a much better picture of your routine, since some people may work overnight, you stayed up longer than usual, or your day just doesn't match the standard 24 hour cycle. Strain can be measured multiple times in specific instances, like when you've worked out, but logarithmically calculates by their patented algorithm a single score for the day. And it's done through a series of equations using time intervals, functions, periods of heart rate values, yada, 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 here's your score. It doesn't just simply add when you see a single score for your workout. Based on your recovery, you'll see a suggested strain score to hit that day, and this keeps us in a nice balance of pushing our cardiovascular fitness and allowing our body to heal. So, we have these restorative zones, the optimal zone, and overreaching, all determined in relation to your recovery score, like I said. It's okay to be in any of these zones on any given recovery day, but it will affect your recovery. From people that I know that use the WHOOP, I've noticed that many people tend to shy away from this overreaching zone. However, these days are important because it's about learning to manage performance while in a fatigued state every now and then, which can provide healthy gains. But if you do that, be prepared that you're probably going to have another bad recovery day. So strain accumulates in several ways. You already know exercise. It's a fitness tracker. That's obvious. But then there's chores around the house, general day-to-day -day physical and mental health and stresses and anything that can cause variations in your heart and expends energy. Like something we wouldn't think of that accumulates a lot of strain are chess players in a tournament. 
Did you know grandmasters have been found to expend up to 6,000 calories, which wouldn't be captured on a tracker that only tracks movements and general exercise. You would need something targeted at this like the Whoop strap. As a side note, you can track individual strain scores on Whoop, like when it auto-detects your fitness, but it's not necessary for your overall strain for that day. Whether or not you log an activity doesn't matter, it's just a good idea to track for future reference. Now back to the idea of calories. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I think it's an ancient and terrible way to monitor your fitness. For one, caloric expenditure is incredibly inaccurate on these devices. Some have been found to be as bad as 70% off. I will say that the Apple Watch generally does a decent job at tracking. Now I've done a video on that. Calories are based on met values from the activity you're doing. So what the devices will do is use their hardware like gyroscopes, accelerometer, etc., in relation to the activity you've manually inputted on the device. And then it'll multiply it by the met value by the time spent doing that activity. It'll attempt to fill gaps when you're not moving or moving erratically. And you can see from all this why it can be so far off. First is simply, Measuring your heart rate and how much time you spend in each of your heart rate zones, which is much less prone to error. And another important note that I, I just don't want to ignore this. Wrist-worn devices, all of them, are prone to error. Each device, whether it's a Fitbit, Garmin, Apple Watch, Whoop, whatever, use their own calculations to fill these gaps when the hardware can't track it. It's just the limitation of these devices and the technology called PPG, which measures the blood in the skin, not your actual heart rate. There's a ton of variables when looking at the accuracy of these devices from one person to another. For more details on that, you might wanna check out my Apple Watch video where I go much more in depth on that tech. Now back to calories. I'll pay attention to them enough to know whether or not I should be making some adjustments on my diet that day. Like if I worked out more, I should eat more. But I don't depend on it to know my maintenance calories or if I'm bulking or cutting. That's done over time of tracking food and monitoring body measurements. It's a huge pain in the ass, but that's the only way to do it. Pushing for calories and say closing rings can also push your body to stress. Like I for one used to set my goal at 1500 calories on my Apple watch, regardless of how I felt physically or mentally. And it was super unhealthy. Even getting the notifications that my friends closed their rings really pushed me to exercise even when I shouldn't have or didn't want to be just because I'm super competitive. And Whoop takes that away. How? Well, Whoop develops a baseline. It just periodically determine where your fitness level is at and how to adjust your strain and recovery to accommodate. It's incredibly individualized, so there's no comparison from one person to the next. It can still help push you to beat your friends in the groups, but since it's individualized, it's not an unhealthy way to make comparisons. Like, what I need to do to get to a 14 strain score is going to be different than what you do, because our different fitness levels are at different levels, whether or not you're more or less than I am. And it'll be based on your recovery score on the previous day, which will also be different than mine. You're striving to hit your own numbers, not someone else's. And this leads me to my next and final point of why I love strain. The comparison of the person you are now to the person you were. Like I said before, the Apple Watch, the pushing for closing rings was unhealthy for me and incredibly detrimental to my physical health. I wasn't making any of the gains I wanted to, whether it was cardio or lifting more. I never allowed my body to recover. Then came the whoop strap and like I said, I made massive leaps in my overall fitness level. Set faster miles, ran longer and lifted more weight. A great way to measure is doing the same workout over different periods of time. You'd expect to see a lower strain score the second time because of the improvements in your cardiovascular fitness. And that's what I've seen. A trend line of my strain score going down, which means that yes, my cardiovascular health has improved, but I'm also ready to push it even harder at the gym to take it to the next level. It's a healthy, gradual, and smarter way to improve yourself without hurting yourself. And that's all about what strain is, why it's an incredible metric, and how I've used it to improve my health. If you have any questions about Whoop or strain, hit me up in the comments or on Instagram. I also recently created a Twitter for the first time in a decade just so I can spread more information. Also, if you haven't jumped on over to Whoop and you want to support this channel, you can click the link in the description for $30 off your Whoop membership. Happy training, and I'll see you in the next one.